Drust. Rust is a new hot language, and it is getting a lot of popularity because it is considered easy to use, and it is much more secure than C. So this one uh, runs in Linux. So let me just open it all up in my Cloud Linux machine here. And uh, there is there are several projects underway now to rewrite code in Rust. And one of the things that Microsoft is doing is investigating the uh, value of just rewriting a large portion of the Windows kernel in Rust. And they haven't firmly decided to do that, but there are a bunch of people that really want them to do that. And so it's worth knowing what's going on and why they feel that way. So let's see, I got uh, terminal here. I got one running Velociraptor. It doesn't need to be running Velociraptor anymore. Okay, there's a terminal I can use. And uh, let me get some instructions on the same screen if I can do it. Let's see. There. All right. And there we go. All right. And let's see if I can get to the Rust project. It's looking pretty good. Okay. And I'd like to put them both on the screen at the same time if I can figure out how this been. Ah, uh, that's a good start. Okay. There, that's pretty good. All right. That might do. All right. So you have to do these things to install Rust. And you always do sudo apt update before you install software to make sure that you're getting the right versions of things. Good. And copy paste is working. This is a good sign. So I do sudo apt update, then I install these things like curl and build essential, which are just libraries you need to develop code. The uh, default distribution of Linux doesn't include them because they think maybe you just want to run code instead of develop code. And then the Rust installer is like this. You just download this script and run it. This is, by the way, considered a sloppy, insecure way to run code where you just download something for a website and run it right away because if it was malicious, it would infect you. But you know, we're doing things like malware analysis anyway. So uh, we're using disposable cloud machines for just this reason, because we're doing nasty, insecure things on them. <clears throat> so I'm not going to worry about it. But as Rust matures, they're going to have to make a better install. It really ought to be an installer that's got signed code or something. but. Okay, right now, proceed with installation default. Yeah, default would be fine, so I press Enter. And there it goes, installing Rust. All right. All right, and they tell me to run this command. I don't know why they don't run it for me, but uh, who am I to question it? I run this command. OK, and now I've got rushed. So I'm going to uh, make a directory called Hello World app and go into it and make a file there called rust with these commands. All right, and here's the code to say hello world, which looks uh, quite a bit like C code. Creates a main, let's see, I think escape Y will get rid of the colors. It does, good, easier to see. So it just has print line, bang, Rust says hello. So I save this with Control X, Y, Enter. And then I compile it with Rust C. So Rust C. Hello. LRS. It's done. So now I run it with dot slash hello. And it says, Rust says hello. So this just means I've got everything working. I can enter code and compile it. So now let's begin to see why Rust is worth having. We're going to make something called int app with these commands. All right. 
and the int app is going to have an integer variable there we do some uh, actions on it here all right and so this defines a i equals one which will be a default uh, variable type and then this specifies that it's an unsigned 32-bit integer set to minus five and then it prints out the values and so if I compile this one uh, with the same command as before rust c int then it complains and says you cannot have a minus in this line can it apply unary operator and there's a page here that talks about types but I've already mentioned the point this is an unsigned integer if it's an unsigned integer it can't be a negative value it would have to be a different type so there's a flag to figure out how to fix that program to get you started and I did all this from a simple tutorial there's a great thing called tutorials point which has great tutorials for many topics and one of them is rust and the more interesting thing than learning how to use rust which is not my goal here is to understand why rust is so important um, and the point is uh, that one I don't care about the adding and subtracting what I care about is integer overflow so let's talk about why you need rust and the reason you need it is because C is extremely dangerous C and C++ and C sharp C is what the Windows operating system is built written in and most other code and it causes a whole lot of problems so if I nano OVC dot C here's a C program that does an integer overflow I copy that and paste it in here whoa and I hit control C to stop that garbage okay I confused it but copy and paste works if I use the mouse all right so this is the old code he did not do the copy all right let's see I like this stuff I tried to use the keyboard which was a mistake I think right click copy okay and right click paste okay and now get rid of the uh, let's see it's this control this escape that escape that all right control KKKK K, K, K. there we are get rid of this stuff all right escape that to get to the bottom all right there so here's my C program and so what it's going to do is define an unsigned character and put a number in there which you can do in C the thing about C is it runs really fast and it's very close to assembly code so it when you define a variable that is a character that's a one byte character that can hold numbers from 0 to 255 and you can interpret that as a letter or as a number and she doesn't know or care which of those you're doing so you can just put 230 in the character and then you can run a loop and just keep adding more numbers to X so we're going to see how this works because I start at 230 and then I add more numbers to make it bigger so I GCC minus O OVC that will make, compile it with the C compiler and put the result in OVC and when I run it OVC okay it starts at 230 and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and when you keep adding to it it rolls around back to small numbers again this is an integer overflow and this is what happens in C when you have a number and you keep adding to make it bigger when it hits the top it just rolls over and gets small again and this leads to a whole lot of security problems <coughs> where you can do all sorts of things by putting in huge objects that are misinterpreted as small objects <coughs> so this is one of the many defects of C a programmer is trying to write code and they have a number and then they add numbers to it how are they supposed to understand that sometimes adding to a number makes it smaller this is a booby trap that programmers fall into and this is one of the many things that rust will not let you do if you try to do the same thing in rust then you do it with these commands although I did it again trying to use the keyboard to copy and paste uh, let's use the mouse all right all right so I have this thing called ov.rs and here's the code that does the same thing that that C code was doing except in rust so it defines a mutable variable which is an 8-bit unsigned integer which is the same thing C calls a character that's 230 and then it adds numbers to it to make it bigger and bigger and print it out so if I rust C that one OV and then I run that one 
It adds and adds and adds, but when it tries to roll over, then it stops and gives you an error message saying, wait a minute, you tried to add a number that would exceed the largest number that will fit in that variable, and instead of rolling around and giving you the wrong number, I'm going to stop and say, you hit the limit. This is much better. Now the programmer will fix the problem. It is actually insane that it's designed so that when you execute the command, it will just cheerfully give you the C will just cheerfully give you the wrong answer and keep going, which is the kind of thing that makes bugs. So that's overflows don't happen in Rust. And string overflows don't happen either. Here's a C buffer overflow, the classic string buffer overflow, the kind that's responsible for a whole decade worth of serious security flaws in the time of Windows XP and Windows 2000, and they do keep happening today, although they're not as common. So we nano strov.c, oh, C, O, V, V, C, all right, doesn't matter. All right, there's, and now shift control V. All right, so here's the code. I define a variable called string one with room for five letters that has A's in it and five letters that has B's in it. And then I take and read a value from the user and put it in string two. And then I just print out the results again. That's all. So I save this one. And then I compile that, which is GCC minus O S T R O V C and S T there. That should do it. Oh, I got to have GCC though. All right, the GNU C compiler. And now I run it. Okay, so string one is this address ending in BB. String two is ending in B6. So string one is just a few bytes after string two. Now I can put in a new value for string two. So if I put in CCC, then it works. String one contains AAA, string two contains CCC. There's no problem. But if I put in something that's too long, like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, oh, then it crashes. String 1 has junk. String 2 has different junk, and it crashed. And notice how insane this is. I read a value for string 2, and it changed string 1. How is a programmer supposed to not go insane. You read the data into string two, and not only did it crash, but it changed the value of a different variable because it just overflowed this variable space into the next variable space. And this is how you get buffer overflows, which are extremely dangerous. And again, you won't have this problem in Rust. So here's how you do the same thing in Rust. And I did it again trying to use command line commands, which are not going to, keyboard commands, which are not going to work. All right. And uh, here's the Rust version of a string buffer overflow, which the code looks very much the same. You define mutable string equals this. You enter a new value, read it from input, the thing is, Rust will pay more attention to what's going on and not make those stupid mistakes. So it's Rust C minus G will include debugging, which you can include. I'm not going to bother with that here, but that's so you can examine what happened. Rust C minus G. Oh, I, Rust C. I hit a carry. Okay, Rust C. All right. No, nope. Rust C. Okay. All right. And now there's a warning, but who cares about warnings? Um, str. All right. And so now I can put in ccc, and that works. But notice that it does not replace the value of aa. It adds to the end of it, which is intentional, but it is a little strange. But it didn't learn it to be. And now even if I put in long stuff, like this, It does not crash. It does not overflow. It doesn't change the value of string 2. String 2 contains Bs, and when you add a bunch of junk to string A, string 2 still contains Bs. It doesn't leak out of one variable into another. It just allocates more space as needed to store whatever the new longer string is. You know, it, it's a language that will not 
go nuts on you and give you the wrong answer and create problems the way she does. It's also, therefore, a little more complicated, but it's very popular among developers. And like I say, there's a lot of motion to rewrite part of the Windows operating system in Rust. Uh, and there, this is currently a hot topic. Uh, so I've seen studies that show that like most developers love Rust and they want to use Rust, but their company is not yet ready to uh, decide to let them use it. They're sticking with the older languages because Rust is kind of new and unproven. But a lot of people think that if we just started using Rust, our stuff would be a lot more secure. It's designed to prevent the major security flaws that are cropping up in our software. So that's what I wanted to show you. And there's a few projects there where you can try some of these things in Rust if you like.